this video is going to be a quick tutorial on how to change fractions to decimals. Okay, so there's two reasons that's at the top of your screen as to why conversions might be important. And now you know why we've been practicing division for the past couple of lessons. So to get started with converting into a decimal, let's start with 3 divided by 28. And this is where I'm sure you're familiar with putting a decimal. Let's go ahead and bring that decimal to the top so we don't forget about it. And we just keep adding zeros until we want to stop, pretty much. So 28 into 30 can go one time. Multiply 1 times 28, and that gives you 28. We're going to subtract, and you get 2. Add that 0, bring it down. 28 cannot go into 20, so I'm going to put a 0 up top. Add a 0, bring it down. 28 into 200. So obviously I do not know that at the top of my head, so I'm just going to start guessing and checking off to the right of my paper or my notes. And then just figure out how many times 28 can actually fit into 200. So pause your screen, guess and check a couple of times, see what you can come up with, and then press play to resume. I found out that 28 times 7 actually gives me a number really close to 200. So I'm going to use the 28 times 7. And 7 times 28 I know is 196. Um, when I subtract, I get 4 left over. So I can keep going if I wanted to, but usually 3 decimal places is good enough um, to give an answer. So I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to say that 3 over 28 can be represented as 107 thousandths, okay? So if I had 3 28ths of a pi, that means I have 107 thousandths of a pi. Okay, so you can do the long division of 17 into 20, but I'm also going to show you how to relate this to 100. And I'll show you in the end what I mean, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make an equivalent fraction and see how many times 20 can go into 100. Well, I know that's five times. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna multiply that 17 times five to figure out what gives me my equivalent numerator, okay? So see if you could follow along. Five times what is five plus three is eight. So that means 17 twentieths is also 85 out of 100. Well, you know with your experience with decimals that 85 over 100 is just 0.85. So Whenever you see a relationship of a denominator that can be easily related to 100, I would use this method because it is so much quicker than trying to do long division. Okay? All right. What about when the denominator is 9? Well, something fancy here is that you will always, always have a repeat decimal, always, okay? So I will prove it to you. Nine into seven, well, can't go. So let's start adding our zeros. Okay, this is gonna be seven times because 72 would be eight and that's too big. So seven times nine is 63. 7 times 9, 63. 70 minus 63, well, that gives us 7. And then we're going to add another 0, bring it down. 9 into 70, yet again. So we're going to say 7 times, yet again. So now you're starting to see the repeat. So whatever number is on the numerator is going to be your repeat. Okay? So, this rule actually goes along with, oops, let me fix this right here. 
So if you had three ninths, okay, obviously it's going to be 0 0.33333. 3, 3, 3, 3. Okay, if you had four ninths, 0 0.4444444, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and repeat. Okay, same for five ninths. It's that number that's on top repeated. Six ninths, okay, 0 0.6666666. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6 and so on and so forth until you get an improper fraction which sort of changes things let's move on here you have 17 ninths so you will have a repeat only you have to figure out which number is actually repeating so <clears throat> 9 goes into 17 well you can have a whole number here it's going to be once because 9 times 2 is 18 so 1 times 9, so let's go ahead and subtract. <clears throat> 17 times 17 minus 9 is going to be 8. Start adding that decimal and the zeros, bring it down. 9 goes into 81 9 times, but this is 80. So it's going to be 8 times. So 8 times 9 is 72. When you subtract, you get 8. Right? Put the zero up there, bring it down. Now you have 9 into 80 once again. That's going to be 8. So can you figure out what your repeating digit is going to be now? If you guessed 8, that's, per that's correct. So 17 ninths is actually 1.8 repeat. All right, now you have a mixed number. So pretty much you're going to ignore the whole number until you actually write the answer, okay? So I'm just going to figure out what 2 divided by 3 is and add my decimals and my zeros until I get about three decimal places. So 3 into 20, 6 times, that's 18. 20 minus 18, that's 2. Put up a 0, bring it down. 3 into 20, again, 6 times. That's 18. So here you have 2 thirds as a repeating decimal, which is 0 0.6. And you can keep going, but honestly, what for? <laughs> so we're just going to head and represent this. The uh, 2 thirds is 0 0.666, but since it was 3 and 2 thirds, you need to say it's bring over the whole number, put your decimal, and then put the 666 six, six with the repeat. So 3 and 2 thirds with the whole number is actually 3.666 repeat. Okay? Now go ahead and pause your screen. Try these six problems on your own. Then push play to get the answers. Okay, as you check your answers, note that number one, you should have known that it was going to be a repeat of 0.4 because it was divided by 9. Number 4 and number 5, I was able to set up a, an equivalent fraction to 100 because 25 times 4 I know equals 100. And I know the direct connection that 5 times 20 equals 100 in number 5.